Alright, what's up guys? This is Ninja Death Strike bringing you another Play TCG match. And this is a match I had about a week ago from when I'm recording this, anyhow, with uh, GunMonkey696. And as you can see from my opening hand, I'm playing Entei. So I actually decide. I, I've initially benched both, and then I decided I didn't want to do that. I'm just going to bench one. And. Um, he decides the same thing, so whatever he had on his bench, he picks that up too. And we start with uh, Voltorb Ente leadoff. So I'm going to lose the opening toss. That means he gets to go first. And he grabs a Curum, which awesome. Uh, one of the reasons Ente is so good is because no one plays water decks, but he just happened to pick a water deck this time. I didn't tell him what deck I was playing, so just a random choice. But uh, get matched up against my only weakness so that's gonna make this a lot more interesting uh, I need to be really careful because Curum is one of the only things that can one-shot an Entei if it gets enough damage on it to do that with Outrage so I need to be very very careful about how I go about dealing damage if I just swing into him with Grand Flame that's going to allow Curum to do 220 damage back to me. That's gonna enough to take me out even with an Aviolite. So I'm gonna have to use a few of my tricks uh, to try and play this match correctly. So I do decide to go ahead and bench the second Entei just because I had the Aviolite in my hand. Um, I don't know. I probably didn't need to do that. I think just leaving one would have been fine, but he gets a turn two electrode without needing to PCOM or anything, which is really nice for him. He's just going to go ahead and blow up for some energy. Uh, he gets to look at the top seven cards, I believe. I just pulled it up, but it was too fast. It sped up too fast for me to see how many cards, but in any case, he only ends up hitting one energy which really sucks for him but luckily it's just enough to allow him to get an attack off because he can also attach manually from his hand still for the turn so that'll give him three energy and uh, the potential to glaciate if he wants to so uh, I think that's what he's gonna end up doing here uh, you can see I already have my damage ready and let's see what he decides to do. Yep, so he goes for the Glaciate. That will do 40 to my active Entei and 10 to the bench. Getting those Violites down, really helpful. Uh, it's going to severely cripple this Kyurem, uh, especially with the Glaciate. Doing only 40 damage per turn is, is manageable. And uh, I don't want to play that Juniper yet, and I don't really think there's anything I need this turn, so... I am probably going to just go for Fire Fang here, and the Fire Fang is actually going to be really, really important in this matchup because uh, after Fire Fang damage, if he flips uh, damage for burn, if he flips the tails and takes burn damage, it's going to put him at 50, and that is going to be enough damage to where uh, Grand Flame can take him out. On top of that, I actually have three chances to hit him with burn. Uh, one right after the turn, and then if he doesn't switch out, he's got to flip again between my turn, and then again uh, once I use my second attack. So there's actually three flips for him to hit a Tails. So that's going to put the probability of him flipping at least one Tails somewhere over 75%. I guess it would be like 80 something I don't know halfway between 75 and 100 I'm not gonna try to do that live but some some pretty high percentage chance of uh, hitting a, a tails at some point to allow me to take him out in two shots without uh, being okayed by outrage myself so sorry I try to move the message thing a little bit off the screen and then it ends up going way too far but anyhow he Junk Arms for Dual Ball gets double head, so now I've got two more Kyurems to deal with, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, just going to be really annoying. Um, he also shows me that he plays Experience Share as well as Electrode, so that's going to allow him to uh, conserve the energy he does have in play. 
and here he hits me with an outrage and puts me at 130 damage so got a lot of damage going on and let's see I think about attack attaching this energy but I'm pretty sure I take it back yeah because I don't have any energy in my discard pile right now so rather than um, go for that I'm just gonna juniper I should have used that junk arm to get something back at least the potion uh, so that was a minor misplay there. I could have healed a little bit of damage, but now that I have a fire energy in the discard, I can go ahead and attach the new one to Entei. That's going to start to let me get my acceleration going. Uh, as far as the rest of this hand goes, I didn't really draw into anything too great here. Uh... The potion definitely matters. It's going to put me at 100. That means even if he goes for Glaciate, I am not going to die. So that was really nice, but I don't really have any other choice than to just take the KO on the active Kyurem. Uh I could have... No, I think I drew the catcher off my prizes. Never mind. That wasn't an option. But uh, he obviously is going to promote the Kyurem that got the experience share. And it looks like he's stuck as far as his hand goes. He uh, doesn't do anything but just draw an attack. So he hits me for... Uh, 40? No? Oh, he had to use Outrage because he didn't have any energy, so he just hits me for 20. And, um, I'm gonna go ahead and catch her and take a prize on this Voltorb while I can. I guess I decide to bench that third Entei. I don't like that move. I should have kept it in my hand for at least one more turn. Uh, so let's see if that comes back to haunt me, but... Um, the reason I decided to attack the Voltorb is one, it's going to shut off some of his energy acceleration, and two, had I attacked either of these Kyurems and he got a DCE, uh, he would have been able to take a KO on me, so I figured it was better just to take the prize while I had it, and then uh, see what happens later. This Kyurem, the one active one, is still not going to be able to KO me this turn. So uh, it wasn't a really big deal to not attack it. And here he just junk arms away. His whole hand for random receiver actually hits an N, which is probably the best supporter he could have hit uh, right there. So that's going to be really good for him because it's going to put me down to three, give him a whole new hand of six, and most likely put him into an energy so that he'll be able to glaciate here. And now you see... Uh, Having that Entei on the bench, the naked one, is just really not doing me any favors here. So here he's going to go ahead and catch her out, which is a good play. Uh, and then plays a level ball. I don't think there's anything left for him to get. Oh, he gets a Voltorb. I'd be surprised if he plays it down, though. It's just going to be a free prize. Yeah, he just uses it to thin out his deck, and then uh, Glaciates hits my bench for 10 each, and does 60 to the active, because it doesn't have a uh, Violite on it. So now, um, kind of in a bit of a pickle, I need a way to get that Entei out of the active spot, and what I decide is that I really need a supporter, so... I'm just going to go ahead and junk arm my hand away for Juniper. <laughs> it's the top card of my deck, so I just... Uh, draw seven more right off the bat and um, get some interesting cards there's not a whole lot I can do here obviously attach the energy to uh, this Entei and then I could catch her out the other Kyurem to try and stall it looks like that's what I'm gonna do that's not a bad idea at all because I'm not gonna be able to get an attack out this turn uh, there's no way to get my active Entei out of the active spot, so uh, yeah, just going to try and stall for a turn, hopefully hope that he can't hit a switch, but he's got one in hand, so that was kind of futile. And uh, now he's going to be able to glaciate for a bunch more damage, so he actually ends me again, which is really annoying because I had a lot of supporters in that hand, so uh, this time Looks like I accidentally drew six. Yeah, I did. So I'm going to put the the other three back in and then just shuffle. And uh, this time I don't hit a supporter, so I'm kind of stuck uh, as far as hand goes. I did get a super scoop up, though. So if I can flip a heads on that, 
It would be really great. Uh, it would let me pick up the active Entei and then promote one that doesn't have damage or that has energy and then bench that one down. But of course I flip a tails because uh, Super Scoop Up just hates both of us, really. <laughs> we never seem to flip heads with it and that is going to make my life a little bit harder. So I just attach the energy hoping that maybe I can manually retreat next turn and I have to sit in here and take another uh, Glaciate to the face. And now I've got two Entes in danger of being knocked out. You see, uh, I have that, um, sorry, lost my train of thought there. You see now that benching that naked Entei was a really, really bad idea. Um, other than your first one, or if you're in danger of losing, you really, really don't want to bench the other Entes unless you can start attaching energy to them. And I benched that one for really no reason at all, and just, uh, just kind of screwed myself over because I've lost two or three turns attacking here when uh, if I hadn't put it down he would have only had the choice to pull out uh, my fully charged Entes so I search my discard here just looking for what I want to junk arm for I would assume I'm gonna get a random receiver even though I played the end this turn so hopefully yeah I just decide to go ahead and attach this turn so that I can well maybe if I attach this turn, I'll, I'll be able to attack, which will be good. Uh, but that means I'll have to junk arm whatever card I draw next turn. So it's going to limit my options for the junk arm on my following turn. But I decide I need to go ahead and start doing something here. So I do uh, attach the energy and attack. And that's going to put him at 30 in a burn. He flips heads on the, uh, the first burn check. And now he has a choice. He can go for the Glaciate and spread more damage, or he can Outrage for the KO. So a kind of a tough choice for him. I think the correct option is probably going to be uh, to go for the Outrage and actually take some prizes. Glaciate's not really going to do that much damage. Uh... To the bench anyhow it'll do 40 to the active and since i flipped the heads on that life herb last turn the really damaged entei the one that i started with is just uh recovered a lot more health so glaciate is not going to threaten him that much anymore so here he junk arms for a dual ball i think i i wasn't really paying attention there sorry i was talking about my side of the field but it looks like he junk armed for a dual ball to get out another Curum, which uh, I don't know. I don't. I I don't think it was necessary to do this turn. Uh, he still got the other one ready to go, so he could have waited a turn or two. But I guess he wanted to attach to it. And uh, I see now he had the Juniper. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Then yeah, there was no reason not to do that. And uh, yeah, he was going to Juniper his hand away anyhow. So. That makes a lot more sense. And now he gets another double heads with this dual wall. I don't really think there's anything he wants. <laughs> He's just going to grab two cards to thin his deck out. But uh, he, I would be surprised if he plays either of those things down. Uh, Curum is obviously going to be his preferred attacker here. Just because it can do so much damage. Groudon would be good if he can get it charged up. But he... He can't really afford to blow up another Electrode. So it'd be a bit risky. Maybe if he had an experience share, but even that is a little bit risky because it's going to be catcher bait and it's going to give up two prizes, meaning I'd only have to knock out one more of these uh, Curums. Whereas if he doesn't play it down, I have to take three prizes on all of these Curums, and that's really going to give him uh, a chance to flip three heads in a row and take me out with Outrage. So I go for the Max Potion here on my benched Entei, get rid of all that damage, and actually top deck an end, so I don't even need to Junk Arm, which is really good. It let me use that Max Potion. And I don't draw into a whole lot here. Uh, heavy Ball, which is not going to do me any good. 
and a life herb and a switch. So I decided to hang on to the life herb just because I'd like to get the maximum amount of healing out of it if I can. Uh, I need to do my math and make sure that I'm not going to be KO'd uh, here. So what really what it really comes down to is I have to go for the Grand Flame and hope he flips the tails, which he does. Uh, that allows me to take him out. Uh, I needed to to kill that thing. Is was my mindset. It was pretty risky going for the Grand Flame because had he flipped a heads, he would have been able to outrage me uh, for the KO, and that would have been bad. Especially since I only had an Entei with one energy. Um, things could have gone south very, very quickly, but I felt like I was kind of in a corner and I needed to take a prize there, so I took a huge risk, which luckily paid off for me. And now I'm in really good position. So now that I have um, 80 damage, I would assume I'm going to go for the Life Herb here. Uh, I go for the Heavy Ball just to see what's in my deck. And yep, there's the Life Herb. Hit a Heads, so I get to heal 60 damage, which is amazing. And now there's not a whole lot else for me to do except go for a Fire Fang. And he flips a Heads here. The reason I went for Fire Fang over Grand Flame, like I mentioned before, I don't want to get obliterated with Outrage, so it's really imperative that I get the uh, the 20 extra damage from Burn to be able to take him out the next turn. So seeing that and recognizing it, he actually uh, hard retreats into the other Curum here, discards 2 energy, which is going to hurt him, just because he's got to be running pretty low on energy now. There's no way to get that back from the discard, so his least, his resources are pretty limited here, but he recognized that he needed to do something in order to uh, keep that cure from being knocked out. So he goes ahead and retreats. He did have the other energy in hand, so he's able to glaciate again. And uh, luckily, really luckily, I top deck that oak. That was a, a really lucky top deck for me. I flip ahead uh, Tails on the Lifer, but it's not a huge deal yet. So the Oak does get me into another fire energy, which is really, really important because it means if I need to Grand Flame, I can guarantee that I charge up this second Entei. So here I go for the potion uh, and I'm assuming... <laughs> I don't have time because it's sped up so much. I'm assuming when I play these, I'm doing math and that they're actually putting me away from certain KOs. I need to be careful of that other Kyurem now that it uh, only has 30 damage. Uh, it can... I'm going to have to use Fire Fang again, which will put it at 60, which will mean uh, Outrage does 120. So I need to make sure that I stay at enough health where I can survive that. And so that's why I play the switch as well. I only need to use Fire Fang this turn. And so I uh, just switch into the Entei that only had two energy, but only has 20 damage, which is kind of important here because now uh, Outrage won't kill me. But he, uh, he retreats again and now it's getting a little bit tight. He's discarded four energy in the last two turns. Uh, which is a big deal. He told me he was playing a ridiculous amount of energy in this deck, uh, like 18 or more. So he's got a lot of energy to spare, but he's burning through it really fast. And uh, it's definitely going to come back to bite him. So now I'm in a bit of a predicament. Uh, this... Kyurem, the active Kyurem, cannot be KO'd by Grand Flame. It'll put him at 110. And uh, if I go for Fire Fang, I'm going to get KO'd next turn. So I decide to Junk Arm for a switch, send the other Entei back up, and then go for the Oak. Uh, I think I need to hit a healing card here. Let's see. If I put him at 60, he would do 120, 150. So yeah, um, he can... I can survive that just barely. Uh, getting a healing item would have been really nice, but 
unfortunately I can't quite hit it and so now if I go for fire fang and he and he flips tails on the burn he's actually going to be able to kill me which uh, would suck and so probably because of that I decided to go for the catcher um, I got that lost remover so I was able to force him to discard another special another energy with that and I drag up this naked curum and now I can actually attack with a lot less uh, worry in order for him to respond now he'd have to play a DCE and I haven't seen any from him uh, for this whole game. So here I'm deci I'm trying to decide whether I want to go for Fire Fang or go for the uh, Grand Flame. So I look at his discard, I see that there's no DCEs in there. And uh, that doesn't mean he doesn't play any though. So if I go for the Grand Flame and he gets DCE, he's just going to be able to destroy me. Uh, if I go for the uh, if I go for the fire, the Grand Flame, if I go for the Fire Fang and he flips the heads, there's no way for him to KO me, even if he does get the DCE. So I decide to take the safe play here, having already taken a really big gamble uh, with uh, that attack earlier, the Grand Flame earlier, banking on the um, coin flip. So turns out he doesn't have a DCE. He shows me his hand. It's just Groudon and a bunch of energy, which he doesn't need now. Uh, he kind of discarded all of his, or a lot of his non-energy cards with that energy might at the beginning. So I go ahead and play my level balls just to look at my deck and see what's there. As you can see, my deck is incredibly thin, and uh, I need to be very careful about how I do things. So I obviously do not play the Juniper because I don't want to make myself lose. And I just go for the attack. I decide to attach the energy through Grand Flame rather than from my hand just because uh, I want to keep cards in my hand in case I need to use that Oak to prevent myself from decking out. So he does decide to go ahead and bench the Groudon here which seems like an odd move. Uh, I guess it does have 180 HP and it's going to be really hard for me to knock out. So I understand it, but it's also a uh, catcher bait. And never mind, he's at one prize, so it really doesn't matter uh, that much because the EX rule doesn't really apply. So here, um, I go for the oak. I believe I'm looking for a catcher, which I don't hit. I only had eight cards in my deck and. Uh, <laughs> There was a very high chance that I would hit that catcher. There's only two cards left in the deck that I didn't draw, and one of them is a catcher. So I missed the catcher, but I hit the junk arm. If I, if those had been the only two cards that I hadn't drawn, that would have been really bad. So I go ahead, get rid of the lost remover and the juniper, because I can't play the juniper, and grab the catcher, and that's going to allow me to catch her and grout on. I know... The Groudon has a huge retreat cost, so he's probably going to be stuck here. And he also can't do jack to me next turn without... Uh, yeah, he can't hurt me. There's no way to get three energy on him. And Trample's not going to do anything. So I see he uh, shows me his hand again, and he's just got a bunch of energy. So he's going to go ahead and scoop, knowing that there's no way for him to get out. So turns out uh, dropping down that Groudon really was... Uh, the end of his game but I don't think it would have mattered either way because I could have just he still had to take four prizes so I could have afforded to just attack with Entei even if I lost it and then come in and revenge him with the other one so that's going to be the match uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it hope you like the deck I really enjoy playing this Entei deck it's a lot of fun and I'm glad I got to put up another video with it so leave me a comment, let me know what you think about the deck, uh, thumbs up if you like the video, and I will have another TCG match coming your way sometime, hopefully within a week. I know I've been slacking on the uploads a little bit, but I haven't been playing as much just because I've been busy. So anyhow, I'll have some kind of video coming your way shortly. Stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching, guys.